Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. We are here discussing Pai Veer Singh. It's its 148th birth anniversary. And you might be wondering, how is he relevant today? A man about 100 years ago who was influencing the whole of Punjab at the time, what we call South Asia, now divided between many nations, primarily India and Pakistan. How is he relevant today? Well, Punjab is again searching for answers. You know about the farmer protests going on. We are again back to being a very patriarchal society. Women's rights issues are being talked about. Sikh consciousness is suffering. We don't have the clarities from the ideas of Guru Granth Sahib. And you can keep adding to it. Dalit consciousness is searching for answers throughout India as well. In that circle, when somebody like Harinder Nath Chattopadhyay, when he says Pai Veer Singh was the sixth river of Punjab, yes, the man who introduced rap to India, man who was a scientist, man who did multiple things, including serving in the constituency in India as a politician, he called Pai Veer Singh the sixth river of Punjab. That's the most famous phrase we are aware of about Pai Veer Singh. So why did he say that? Because he dealt with these different consciousness streams. He presented solutions to them. And all those streams are looking for ideas again. They're looking for solutions. This is why he's relevant. He impacted people's lives. He came up with not just creative solutions. He also did institutional solutions. Hence, he became as large as a river. In the land of Punjab, which is about five rivers, he became the sixth river. This came from a man who is celebrated within India, again, Harindranath Chattopadhyay. Now let me also introduce one more name, which will tell us how to look at Pai Veer Singh. Dr. Harbant Singh, the editor of the Sikh Encyclopedia, scholar in his own right, he called Pai Veer Singh somebody who connected the old with the new. Somebody who knew Punjabi's new learning systems and combined it with the old learning systems. So he's a link. He's a link to people like me. He's a link to people whether you're sitting in New Delhi or whether you're sitting in diaspora anywhere in the world. He's a link to those who are learning the new systems which are coming to us through technology as we are celebrating this, as well as the old indigenous systems which we learn through from generation to generation as our forefathers and foremothers must have learned. And that's what Dr. Harban Singh called and uh, Pai Veer Singh, the one who links the old with the new. This is why Pai Veer Singh is so, so important in the disruptions which are happening within Punjab throughout the world, as well as this Dalit consciousness, women consciousness, Sikh consciousness, Punjabi consciousness, amidst the hyper-nationalism, especially between India and Pakistan, and within India, between the right-wing politics, as well as the pseudo-secularist politics. Pai Veer Singh is right in the middle of it. He dealt with all these things. That's why we need to know much more about him. Man who was called not just a saint servant, he's a poet, he's, he's editing major works, he's a linguist, he's an institutional bindle, he's a visionary. To me, at the end of the day, I prefer the phrase which Professor Puran Singh called him, he's the true poet of the East, and the vulgar eyes cannot see him. So let's take a journey to see him, which will hopefully reduce our vulgarity. So how did he do all this? Well, he did it by being very creative in his approaches. His language mattered. The average person of Punjab understood his language. Villager of Punjab understood his language. People in the city understood his language. People who were educated understood what he's saying. People who were not educated also understood what he was saying. That's the creative genius in him. People who were activists, who were working at the national uh, countering the British, they understood him. And people who were working with the British also understood him. This is the man who brought his consciousness, who developed his consciousness from the ideas of Guru Granth Sahib, from the secondary texts of his Sikh historical traditions and make them relevant not just to the Sikhs, but to all Punjabis and all South Asians, whether they were Hindus, whether they were Muslims, whether they were women, whether they were Dalit, or whether they were Sikhs. He did it by connecting with them. And he was able to connect with them 
because his consciousness, his surt, his poetry, his novels, his editorials, his newspapers, his collected anthologies of creative writings of secondary text traditions, all of them developed a positive approach towards making people connect with their past, with their heritage, and learning from those as he's written it himself. He says, I'm doing all this, including writing the first novels of Punjabi, so people can see what a true really heritage is, rather than those who are running the countries right now. At the time, the British and their sycophants and their agents. This is how he did it. He himself went through the internal journey and he writes about it. When he writes about nature, his poetry you are aware of, many people are aware of, but I want to start there, but definitely not end there. Po poetic impulses is where we go beyond cognition, beyond thinking. Sadi surt de vich pravesh ho janda fir. Jino apa kena jo si soch ni sakde, o galla karniya. So poetry, whether he wrote about Kashmir, whether he wrote about Himalayas, whether he wrote about internal pilgrimage, whether he wrote about the spring he's having conversations with, any of those and all of those were about going within. It's appreciating the nature, appreciating the beauty within and the beauty around you. Taking that and moving towards more concrete forms which most people understand. So that's where he looked at. He's like, look, you know, people are reading novels and Punjabi has no novels right now. So every novel he wrote, he made the protagonist to be a woman. That was revolutionary. This is the time when even in North America, and even in the United States of America, the suffrage, which means the women didn't have the right to vote yet, had not occurred. But he was writing the first novels which the Punjabis weren't used to, where every single protagonist is a woman. And he talks about their condition, how everyone is treating them, including the religious, including the legal, including the political, including the everyday people. And he takes us through the journey where she rises like a sundari, where she wants to live like uh, Subhag, where she wants to present in the intimacies in like Bivor. So ideas of how to have intimacy, how to become revolutionary, how to survive in this man's world, all of these come out in his novel. So he did it by relating to the conditions of people, relating to average person's survival, including a woman, as well as those who are fighting politically, who have the remnants of Sikh sovereignty within their mind through the ideas of Sundari. And then exploring very deep philosophical things of Jabji. You know, Jabji cannot be translated. Pai Veer Singh explores Jabji's five khands in his novel. Rana Surat Singh. Otherwise, you know, Jabji is something which would blow your mind. Jabji cannot be translated. But Harinder Singh, who have written, Jabji o de Darga da Nazara hai. So Nazara lea janda. Pai Veer Singh ne lea Nazara. Te un Nazara lea ke, ona ne oda bian kita. So he elaborates that Nazara. What he is seeing in these states of existences of Khands. And he elevates those through novels, idea which is so abstract, but he beautifully takes us on a journey from that. Same thing with the newspapers. He's writing the editor, he's starting the first Punjabi newspapers. He's like, look, we know what Indians think, we know at the time, which means the politicians think, we know what the British think, but how about writing what Punjabis think? You know, so Khalsa Samachar, he writes his first editorial. The first line of a first volume says, we are in the age of education. And he says, any community, I'm paraphrasing a bit, which wants to come out of this sort of uh, slaveries of the old and walk to become sovereigns in the 20th century, because he's writing this in early 1900s mostly, and the, at the end of 18th century, he's saying the age of education is so, so important. So he does it by writing editorials. He does it by writing in Khalsa Track Societies, essays which people can read, people don't have time to read. He's creatively writing the history of the six, what the gurus went through by calling them the new level of magics, the chamatkars of Guru Nanak and Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj. He's taking uh, serious works in Braj, in voluminous histories, and editing them with proper notes, and where he feels that this does not suit 
or this does not measure up to the standards of Guru Granth Sahib when he edits, for example, Mahakavi Santok Singh's work in Braj. Incredible work. And when he writes a note, he says, but Kavi ji e nahi keh sakde. That's his humble way of saying, this is not something which Mahakavi Santok Singh would have written. So he is nuancing things for us. He's providing us context. He's telling us the pretext of things, the subtext of things, and then provides context in the realities we live in. He does the same things with the nationalistic movements in India. You know, I mean, we are back to that statement again. Look what's happening in India. It's all become about Hindus and Muslims and fighting and then the Hidutva politics and the love jihad. But he writes about that in his poem called Kutub Dilat. He says, by the names, you cannot make somebody a somatic implying Muslim and somebody a Hindu. Then he talks about if you want real Azadi and he uses this word in Ganga Ram poem he wrote. He says that Azadi is a gift. And do you know how to embrace this gift? Korni Chanda, everyone wants Azadi. India is going through its own things in the last five years about the new Azadi they are looking for. And this is how he was carrying the ideas of, uh, you know, people wrongly call it nationalism on patriotism. He actually was about the Sikh idea of Azadi, which is freeing every individual at every level and not that the bipolar or the two party systems we are used to now. That's what he does in these movements. Even when he, when uh, Master Tara Singh is in jail, he writes a letter to him and he invokes, he says, we might disagree on approach, but we are of Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj. And he uses the phrase in there, he calls it Parvarik Jathe Bandi, that this is the family, we are the family of Jathe Bandis. This is very, very important for Sikh world today. We must understand this in our disagreements. How do we revive the Parvarik Jathe Bandis? That's the kind of work. So he does this in economics, founding of the Punjab and Sindh Bank, creating. So he uses all his learnings to create economic systems, economic institution building, setting up its first free bank. And you know what is happening with Punjab and Sindh Bank in 2020 in India by privatizing it to the next level. This is very relevant. He founded this. He founded the Khalsa College Amritsar, probably the only non-guru related building which we revere in terms of our architectural marvel in Amritsar. He is setting up, you know, the central orphanage, the blind asylums. So covering the social systems of the time, setting up institutions for that, covering press, literature, novels, religious writing, political writings. And when somebody like, you know, Taniram Chatrik pays him tribute, you know, Tani Ram Chatrik, who became the first typist in Punjabi, who was trained by Pai Veer Singh, he calls him love incarnate. That's Pai Veer Singh for us. This is how he did it. This is why he did it. And what he did was set up institutions, set up role modelings, set up things in economic systems and educational systems, and then use all the strengths we have of connecting with Ikkwankar, with the oneness, the idea of Guru Nanak, which is what he fell in love with. And to him, Guru Nanak and Guru Gobind Singh became one. And to humanity became one. He used all those ideas which created personal strength for him to develop economic, educational, political, and other strengths for the community. In this sense, you know, I'm just recalling right now, uh, Professor Puran Singh has written in one of his forewords. He says, for people like me who did not speak Punjabi, Puran Singh is writing this. He says, for those who did not know Punjabi, the letters, the Gurmukhi of the Gurus, he says, when somebody like Pai Veer Singh enters your consciousness, even we who have never studied Punjabi begin to learn Punjabi and understand Punjabi. That's a scientist writing who traveled the world. This is what Pai Veer Singh's presence, the Pai Veer Singh's presence did to Professor Puran Singh. And that's where I started this conversation today, how to develop that I, not a vulgar I, which will allow us to see Pai Veer Singh. That's what it did to somebody like Professor Puran Singh. That's what it did to people like Harindranath Chattopadhyay. That's what it did to Taniram Chatrik. That's what it did to Dr. Harban Singh and many others. This is why Pai Veer Singh mattered. Pai Veer Singh matters and he will continue to matter because even from a Dalit angle, when Gyani Dit Singh dies, who was the epitome of Dalit consciousness among Sikhs at the time and for the Punjab, he wrote the tribute and the poem, you are the one who woke up everyone, 
you are the one who woke up the panth jinne kaum jagati si hun tu aap so reha he wrote a tribute to gyani dit singh so taking all these different streams of consciousness collecting them in the symbolism of punjab in the localities of punjab pai veer singh becomes the sixth river when the rivers are drying when they have been divided between the nationalisms of the things between the religions between patriarchalness between the consciousness of upper caste and the lower caste the sixth river must flow again we the rivulets need to understand how to develop this kind of a river again how to revive this river and then pai veer singh will not just be the pai in title pai is a title given among the sikh communities when when somebody becomes the brother of the panth he is brother of everyone he is a brother of people who are fellow travelers and that consciousness that surt that chetna that um, concreteness in your work and abstractness in your understanding bringing them together is what makes it a gurmukh and i end it here this is what guru nanak pasha says gurmukh is somebody who is bring bringing nadang and vedang together and remains within this it is not a uh, unfair thing to say that he was a pai gurdas of the 20th century look at the just volumes of his work the volumes of uh, institutions he founded and the volumes of contributions he has done so i end with my favorite poem of his where he says sinne khich janane khadi o kar aram ni bande he like those who are who are being driven internally who are tearing apart internally or as we say in english the where fire is in the gut he says if you have that within you then you cannot sit still you must flow and you have to continue to flow and you have to keep flowing until you reach oneness until you practice oneness until you stand understand oneness and you become oneness the ekankar the force itself that's pai veer singh for us hopefully it gives you a few ways to see how he is relevant today and how he must be one of the models to understand solutions for sikh consciousness and solutions for punjabi consciousness wai guruji ka khalsa wai guruji ki fateh